Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Taurus. If Taurus is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. What do these tea leaves have to show us tonight? And we are in full Taurus. Are we in Taurus season still? No, we're in Gemini season now. I'm all mixed up. We're in a whole different part of the <laughs> Almost summer now, Lenore. Get with the program. Okay, well, I had a little bit of a time slip there. Um, we, uh, we have for the card tonight, the Five of Wands, okay? And this card has to do with strife, unfortunately. Um, let's, uh, I, we all, well... <laughs> we might all know what strife is, but um, if you do not happen to know what that is, it is uh, kind of some kind of um, pain, problems, uh, you know, kind of a pain in your butt, um, just hardship, okay, conflict, arguments, this kind of thing. Um, things are just not going exactly how you'd like them to, okay. And so, we're going to look at this and kind of see what's going on. Now, I want to look at this one. Um, and I'm seeing a house here. And yeah, it's kind of more of the pyramid shape or um, kind of a, uh, like a, what am I trying to, like a tent maybe? But, uh follow me with, follow me as I go down this rabbit hole. Um, no, it looks like what I would consider like a domicile. Okay. Um, somewhere that somebody feels like at home. Okay. And I'm, and I'm wondering as I'm looking at this, um, is this your home? Is this somebody else's home? I'm not sure yet. Uh, but I am seeing up here, we have two people that look like they're kind of in a bit of an argument. One is kind of standing over the other one, but looking down, they both are very close and it looks like uh, not in the most happy posture, right? So I feel like this is kind of something that has to do with home life, um, having somebody come into your home to stay or um, maybe you are in a situation where you're having to stay at somebody else's house. Okay. Um, now I am seeing hearts. Okay. So there is love here. I do believe that this is maybe a family member, maybe a child, um, adult child, uh, maybe a younger child who hasn't always lived with you. Uh, maybe you are going to, you know, go into a situation where you start living with your family, um, with your children, um, simplifying your life a little bit. Uh, but I, and I'm taking a breath because I feel like there's a lot of stress surrounding this. Um, there's some major conflict. Uh, I see this person, the thing here, and it looks like they maybe have a baby on their back, um, but it looks like they're kicking the heart. So that's why it leads me to believe that maybe this is like uh, somebody that you cared for, or um, maybe there's, you're going into a household where there um, are young children living there, uh, whatever, there's a, there's a youthful energy. Okay. Uh, 
I do, and I'm trying to make sense of this in my head, but I do think that this is kind of a transitional period. Um, and I think that this is kind of due to some like unforeseen circumstances. I think they just came out of nowhere, basically. Maybe there was some kind of, you know, I don't know, like a disaster at the home or, um, you know, the cost of living just became too much. Uh, maybe moving into another place soon and there's like a, a period of time in between where you have to stay with somebody or they have to come stay with you. Um, but I think that everybody kind of had good intentions going into this. Um, I don't know that it was like the most exciting news for everybody that you all would be living together, um, or staying together. Uh, but, um, I think that it has not been ideal. Um, and I wonder if maybe you haven't lived with anybody for some time. Um, that's so difficult to go from a situation where you have your own space to having um, other people live with you. If it's romantic or otherwise, um, even if you don't see them that often, it can be stressful just to know somebody is sharing the same space as you. Um, but I do think because of the kicking of the heart and the strife, the card, the strife card. Uh, I think that it's just kind of like a lot of little things adding up, right? Maybe some messiness around the place. Um, maybe, you know, uh, and this, this is like in my mind a throwback to my roommate years. <laughs> um, when somebody would eat your food um, or like move your food around, um, and accidentally leave it outside of the refrigerator for like 12 hours and it would spoil, um, things just kind of disappear. Not big things, right? But just things disappearing, little, you know, toiletries or whatever. And, um, you try to just, you know, whatever, but gosh, it adds up, doesn't it? I mean, financially, but more, more so than that, it's just being in a situation where, um, you just aren't feeling comfortable in the space that you're in. You have to kind of really take, um, more notice of your things and, you know, where are they? And, are they missing or have they been misplaced? Has somebody been, has somebody been using my toothbrush, you know? Um, just kinds of things that you don't, you don't really want to have to think about. <laughs> but um, I do think that this is not going to be forever. This is not a long-term situation. I think this is transitory. Um, so we must remember ourselves and remember that these emotions that are coming up, these circumstances that have arisen, they are transient, they do not last. They will pass through us, pass through our life. We will pass through them, however you wanna picture it. Um, and we will be on to the next thing soon. I see this bird, okay, and it looks like Oops, I touched his tail. Sorry, bird. Um, the big beak, and it's kind of standing on the one foot. I imagine, um, I think they're called, geez, it's like a snowbill something. I can't remember. I always try to remember this guy because they look like dinosaurs. They're huge birds. Um, they're like, not as big as an ostrich, but they're pretty big. They're bigger than um, like a heron but anyways they're they're beautiful but they're also just like grotesque and scary looking <laughs> they look like a muppet and a dinosaur bird um but the thing that's so pretty about them is that they are um like other long-legged birds um 
like the stork or the heron or you know all these beautiful so many kinds of birds that kind of just stand out there in the waters the shallows and they almost look like they're meditating waiting for the right moment to get their catch of the day and um I feel like you are really, really mustering up all your strength to get into this place where you can just kind of zen out, get through the things that are happening, coming to your center, allowing the chaos to do what it does, not getting too attached to these feelings or events. And um, again, just knowing that they're gonna pass, right? Try not to take it too personally. Everybody in this situation is uncomfortable. Um, you know, it's, it's just hard. It's hard to take somebody into your house. It's hard to be um, in somebody else's house. So um, I think that, you know, to try to remind yourself it'll be done and you will you know you're either going to go back to your house being the same or you will be in another living situation that probably will be better um you know i would really try to refrain from engaging in the argument arguing the um you know any kind of course no altercations or anything like that um, but just kind of staying away from the conflict as much as you can, keeping your stuff as tidy as you can, <laughs> you know, um, and accounted for trying to just, you know, not, in, not engage too often. Um, and if you've ever had roommates or you're living with roommates right now, you know, sometimes even if you love them, um, and they are your friends. Sometimes it's better to just kind of be in a situation where it's like you're living with ghosts. You see um, the remnants of them, their things sometimes sitting on the coffee table, their food in the cabinet, but you never see them. <laughs> you're on different schedules. You're waiting until you hear the door close before you go out into a shared area. Um, you know, these kinds of things, uh, and it, you know, it can suck. It can, but, um, sometimes it is just the easier path, the more simplistic, um, path of least resistance, right? Uh, and then you are done, done, done. Okay. And let's see, what else do we have? We have this little chalice right here, and this is in that spiritual zone. So I think that even during this, this situation that is going on, and let me see if I can kind of just get this up here. I'm trying to, sometimes it's hard to figure out how to get the light. To, there we go. So you can see the little chalice right there. And, uh, you know, this is kind of when we see the, the holy grail, the chalice, the singular cup, kind of like the attainment of um, all that is divine, the enlightenment, the thing that you have been questing for, um, this higher consciousness. And I think that, you know, sometimes when there is a feeling, this like oppressive feeling in our living space, that is when we are seeking um, those interior places, landscapes, where we do the spiritual work. We focus on things that we can have some control over. And that is our faith. That is our spirituality. That is our self-work. That is our studies and research and reading and um, our creativity. All of these things are the things that we can control in our life. Um, and so when you are feeling more out of control of your environment or your sacred temple or your, you know, you are out of the place that feels like home to you, um, that's when you find the home within yourself, right? And you work towards that kind of grail quest 
okay and that is um you know perfection of the self per, uh <laughs> ridding of the ego the integration of um you know the archetypes and these kinds of things the shadow work um individuation uh and and just going over um going over those sacred places remembering i love the idea of this thing called um the memory palace Okay, or the art of memory. And this is kind of a um, technique that people who have really, I mean, just astounding capacity for um, memorizing and remembering different kinds of facts or, um, you know, just all kinds, I mean, just all kinds of things. Um, the, it's, that's something else you could look up that's really kind of like bizarre and interesting is um these uh competitions they have for memory where people can just like they spend their lives memorizing stuff or you know and that's just wow but one of the techniques is the art of memory or the memory palace and so this is kind of like a visualization technique where you kind of um and this is one that i'm familiar with that i like myself but going through a um like a a visualization of a garden okay and as you walk and you look down and you see every little stone in the path each stone can be tied to um, some kind of fact or memory um, every plant or flower that you go by can be tied to a, you know a fact or a memory and so uh, in this visual visualization I'll give you an example come on come down here please I'm almost done come on pudgy Oh, goodness. Come on, buddy. Oh, you're such a big, big boy there. Let go. Let go of it. Let go of it. Thank you. Okay, so as you are walking through, and say you're looking at a flower in this, in this garden in your mind, and as you look at this flower, this flower uh, represents, you know, your mother's anniversary, okay, to your father or um, the flower next to it represents the name of your favorite professor in college. Um, and then this, the stone beneath it represents, um, you know, the, the feeling of um, like the first time you held your child. Okay, something like this. Um, and, the, and so when you when you visit this place in your mind, when you're in a nice and relaxed seated position or laying in bed at night and you, um, you know, sink into uh, a place of restfulness and you can get into a, a, a very vivid kind of um, place of uh, a visual meditation or active imagination and you're walking through this place that you have um, created and that you know so well you know where everything is and you decide oh I'm gonna go off to the left here and this is where I visit all of my you know memories of love and you know the first loves of my life and um you know, all those beautiful summer days I spent swimming with my friends and, you know, the first time I went to a drive-in movie and, um, you know, I got my driver's license and how did that feel, you know, driving with the windows down and the, the wind blowing through your hair and these kinds of things. Um, so it's an interesting technique and I think that um, it's something that, you know, we could all use, of course, people do use them for more kind of um, <laughs> probably more um, productive memorization or, you know, whatever um, f facts and things, scientific facts or something. But um, yeah, I like to do these. I like to use this technique for when I am in a place that is emotionally difficult. 
I'm in conflict. Uh, I've been in a um, kind of a bleak landscape of depression or melancholy, which sometimes I can for months at a time barely, you know, f function. Not so much as in I've gotten older, but especially when I was younger and. Um, and I just could not figure out, I had a lot of trauma and stuff that, um, things going on, a lot of death in my life. And so anyways, I would, um, I came upon this, this, uh, this technique and, uh, kind of even tied to, um, this, uh, St. Teresa of a village, she has the, um, interior mansion, which is not unlike the memory palace. And, um, there are some interesting books. There's actually, um, a really interesting book and I, the author escapes me, but it is called, uh, Spir spiritual pilgrims. And it's about, um, some, the Jungian techniques of active imagination mixed with um, uh, the Teresa of Avila's uh, interior mansion or interior castle. And um, these are really interesting. Um, exploring your the depths of your faith, your um, many uh, aspects of self and archetypes and um, experience and non-experience and um, you know just basically really getting in touch with the um, unconscious the collective unconscious all of these things but doing it through um, the intentional process of um, visualization and building your interior landscapes um, some people kind of relate this, I think, and it maybe is a little, I don't really do astral work myself, but I think it's not unsimilar. Um, and that maybe sometimes is a little more passive. I don't know, but I think maybe some of the landscapes are kind of already, um, like you're going into a landscape that is pre-existing, I think, but this is kind of more building, building your, I kind of. <laughs> Kind of think of it as like almost like Minecraft, spiritual Minecraft for <laughs> playing out the, um, you know, the allegories and um, ordeals and scenarios that we must <laughs> in, in our interior spaces. So when you are going through difficult times, I think things like this are really interesting to put into action. Okay. And when you're feeling like you're lacking privacy, sometimes the only place that you can find refuge is kind of in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, right? So, um, you know, I think that, uh, doing things like this, being proactive about, you know, just finding a place for yourself so that you can, um, have some peace and, um, and also f fortifying yourself, you know, um, I think that's the other thing is you become, um, more and more tempered, um, to these very uncomfortable situations, um, when you are doing that very important interior, um, work for sure. Okay. All right. Now I want to look at this and it looks like, I mean, how I thought it would look pretty much very emotional. Okay. But I also am looking at this and I'm thinking that there are some seeds being sown here and, um, almost like a field being, uh, you know, sown with seeds. And so I think in this troubling hard time, it is really motiv motivating you to get some things done. Okay. Um, kind of you are pried out of the comfort of however life was previous to this and you're having to get some stuff done and that's hard. Okay. I mean, I know it can be kind of, um, even traumatic, especially if you are not living in your own space and you're staying with somebody and you're feeling like, uh, worried about where you're going to be next or, um, you know, when are you going to be able to move on, move in or, you know, whatever that is, that can be very hard you know, very emotionally trying, but I think that you are surprising yourself 
uh, because you are managing and you're figuring things out. You're really activating that part of yourself that it's problem solving, getting it done, 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 done faster than you imagine. So, um, although this is emotional, uh, this is, this is not, this is not a bad thing in some ways. Okay. Um, and you are, you're a very strong, strong spirit and being. And not only that, spirit is with you, I think. And you are, um, you know, being watched over and, and held by that divine thing that is there for us, especially in our time of need. Okay, so I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to bring these messages to you. Um, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm. And I say us because we are a community here. And you are part of this community. And even if you haven't subscribed yet, you should think about doing that. Definitely. Um... You can hit that little bell when you subscribe and that will let you know when the next videos come out. We're on a schedule where I am doing uh, one reading for every sign once a week. So all 12 of them get read and um, in one week from now, about seven days from now, the next Taurus will be out. Uh, in the meantime, you can watch your other placements. Okay, uh, your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising. A lot of people watch Venus and a lot of people cross watch. Cross watching is when you um, watch readings for your loved ones, your spouse, your significant other, your children, your sister, your brother, all of them. You can watch, you could just watch every reading. <laughs> um, but other than that, if you want to leave a comment, please do. Um, let me know how you're doing. I read every single comment, every message that's emailed, and I appreciate all of them. I really do. Um, you all are the ones that really um, give me good feedback and keep me doing this thing. All of the love and um, the sharing of your stories and how you relate to different things that come up in the readings. Um, that really, really makes me feel like I'm in the right place doing the right thing. <laughs> okay. All right. I want to thank you so much and we will talk again really soon.